right, we're now on problem number 15 on page 463. So 15. And see, they have a chart, and it says city and noon temperature in Fahrenheit. So I'll just write temperature. Temperature. And city A is 50 degrees. B is 33. C is 27. D, D is T degrees. T degrees. E is 68 degrees. F is 44 degrees. And G is 40 degrees. All right. Now the question says, the table above shows the noon temperature for seven cities. I designate A through G. All right. If the median noon temperature, so the median, the median is 40 degrees, 40 degrees, that's the median, then the noon temperature for city D could be any of the following except. So the median means what? It means the middle number. It means if we were to rearrange all of these numbers from smallest to highest, the 40 would be the middle. So let's let's rearrange all the numbers, I guess, except for t from smallest to highest, because we don't know what t is. So let's see, the smallest is 33. No, the smallest is 27. Then we go to 33. 27, 33. We have 40. Then we have 44. Then we have 50. And then we have 68, right? I should have written. Six numbers down, and I wrote six numbers down, right? And they're saying the median is 40. So in order for the median to be 40, this needs to be the middle number, right? The middle number. That means there need to be just as many numbers smaller than 40 as there are numbers larger than 40, right? It, just the way I drew it right now, it's not the. It doesn't look like the median, right? Because there's only two numbers less than it, and there's three numbers greater than it. So I think you see where this is going. T has to be someplace here. T has to be someplace less than 40 degrees in order for 40 to be the median number. So let's see. It says, and actually T could be less than or equal to 40. Because even if, if we had another 40 here, then 40 would still be the median, right? Because if you put all the numbers in order, you know, you have seven numbers, the, the fourth highest number would still be 40. So T has to be less than or equal to 40. So if we look at the choices, A is 29, well, that satisfies it. B is 35, that satisfies it. C is 39, satisfies it. D is 40. And then if we look at E, E is 42. So that does not satisfy it. So our choice is E. E. All right, problem number 14. This one looks exciting. And I will do it in an exciting color. So let's see, let me see if I can draw this. So I have a line on the top. And then I have a line that goes straight down like that. And then this thing goes like this, something like this. And then it goes something like this. Okay, draw this right. Draw this even. And then it goes, well, close enough, I think to what they have on the drawing. And let me fill in all the information. So it says that these are right angles. This is right angle. Length of this is 6. The length of this is 6. Length of this is 6. And then it tells us that these are 30 degrees. 30 degrees. And it says, what is the perimeter of the figure above? So in order to figure out the perimeter, we know this side, we know this side, we know this side. We need to figure out these two sides, right? These two sides. So once we know those, and then we're set. And and you know you could do some fancy things here if you wanted to go in the wrong direction, but you'd get the right answer. You could make you know a 30, 60, 90 triangle here, and here, and you know figure out this side and then figure out the hypotenuse, et cetera, et cetera. But the real trick of this is just kind of seeing the negative image here, trying to see kind of what hasn't been drawn. And and I'll show you what I mean. If we draw, let's just draw a little line here. And I think now you'll start to see what I'm doing. 
if we have a if if there's a line here what what's this angle well this this whole thing is a right angle it's 90 degrees so this angle would be 60 right and so with this angle this angle would also be 60 degrees and so with this angle right cuz they have to add up to 180 and if two of them are 60 the third one's going to be 60 so what do we know about this triangle right here well it's an equilateral triangle all the sides are the same because all the angles are the same well, we know one of the sides. We know this side we made up, because it's going to be the same length as this side up here. So this is going to be 6. Well, if that side is 6, then all of the sides of this equilateral triangle we made are going to have to be 6. right? And then we're done. Now we just have to add up all the sides. So it's 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. right? We ignore this one. This isn't part of the perimeter. The perimeters are the purple sides. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is, so 5 times 6 is equal to 30. Choice D. All right, problem number 15. Problem number 15. M is the greatest prime factor of 38. M greatest prime of 38. N is the greatest prime factor of 100. N greatest prime of 100. What is the value of m plus n? Well, uh, for without knowing a trick here, and it, a trick hasn't just jumped into my head, let's just try to factor them. Do the prime factorization. So 38. It is, and actually, do you know, the the easiest way to do the prime factorization is, well, look, it, we want to get the greatest prime factor, and this one's actually pretty easy because you have two, and then it's two times what? Two times nineteen. We're done. That was pretty easy, right? Two times nineteen. Nineteen is the greatest prime factor of thirty-eight. Hundred might take us a little bit more time, right? Because it's two times fifty. Right, 100 is 2 times 50. 50 is 2 times 25. 25 is 5 times 5. Actually, that didn't take us much time either. This is just a straight, I thought there might be a trick here, but this is just a straight prime factorization problem. So the greatest prime factor of 100 is 5. You add them together, 19 plus 5, 19 plus 5 is equal to 24. And that is choice C. OK, let's see if I have time to fit in problem number 16. Otherwise, I'll do it in the next video. Line L has a positive slope and passes, let me draw coordinate axes. So that's my y axis, that's my x axis, and I'm going to draw another line in a different color. Let's see, it has a positive slope, so that means it's going to go from you know the bottom left to the top right. And it goes through the point 0, 0. So this is line L. Line L looks something like that. So this is line L. If line K is perpendicular to line L, which of the following must be true? So it intersects at a perpendicular angle. So line K is going to look something, let me do it a different color. Line K is going to look something like this, right? It's perpendicular. It's perpendicular line K. So this. So, uh, and, and I have a feeling that this is going to go into something that you just need to know, that the perpendicular, if you, if you know the slope of something, let's say line L's slope. Let's say L, let's say, you know, let's say that this is y is equal to mx plus b, but we know it goes through the intercept, so it's actually just mx. Then we know that line k, line k right here, is going to have the negative inverse of the slope of line L. So it's going to be negative 1 over m x and then plus b. We this could this could you know intersect right here. We don't know because they didn't tell us it goes through the origin. So we don't know what b is. B could be zero. But the bottom line is the only thing we do know is that if this number is positive, this number is going to be negative. And they told us that this is positive, right? And let's see. Choice A, line k passes through 0, 0. No, no. Oh, C, choice C. Line k has a negative slope. And that's all we know.